Okay, folks, uh, it's been a little while, and um, I've been wanting to do this for some time, um, but these videos always take a long time to film and to edit. Um, but here we are, this is the 2024 Beatles collection. Now, a lot has changed since my last Beatles collection video, so hopefully you find this interesting, but it is gonna be a long one. Now, first up, we have the Decca tapes. This has um, all the songs from that January 1st, 1963 audition. And um, I think George, as in George Harrison, does the best singing on this record. Uh, next up is a German Please Please Me. And this is the, uh, the pressing that sounds really good that people look for. It's based on that Die Beatles thing. I think it's called Die Beatles. Um, but yeah, this is the same, the same record, just, uh, you know, with the, the Please Please Me um, album cover that we're all used to. Here is a Japanese Please Please Me. And here is, this is the 2012 Stereo. And let me do this so it's easier to get to them. This here is a 2014 mono. Now I have two of these because this one skips on, uh, I think it's Misery, it skips. So I bought another one for a good price, which is this one right here. So I have two monos. Okay, next up we have a Japanese, oops, I'll look at that. <clears throat> a Japanese with the Beatles. A 2012 stereo with the Beatles. And the 2014 mono. So I only have four copies or three. And here is Meet the Beatles, which I think is a better album than um, with the Beatles. And this just had its 60th anniversary this past February, which is pretty cool. Here is a French A Hard Day's Night that I got recently, maybe a couple of months ago. It's on the, oh no, this isn't the French one. Excuse me, this is a Japanese one. I do have a French one though, but this is the Japanese A Hard Day's Night. And here is the French one. Let me see, Pete Marconi right there. And it has a single flip back which is a little weird um but it's there and this sounds actually pretty good here is this is the 2012 stereo and here is the 2014 mono which is fantastic and we have the beatles second album Something new with the cellophane still on it. I still have it in the sleeve though. Here is a Japanese um, Beatles for Sale. The 2012 Stereo. 2014 Mono. Beatles 65. Beetle 6, and another newer pickup for me is this Horzu Help, which sounds really good, has a lot of bass. It's pretty much the same as the English one, but I kind of like this, uh, this album cover more than the original English one. It has a bit more energy to it, I think. It doesn't look so uh, plain Jane. Here is a what is this this is a blue box help i think from the 70s sounds pretty good as the original stereo mix um so so did that um german help that i showed you it has the original stereo mix this is a japanese help which also has the original stereo mix and here is the 2012 
um, help with the newer 87 stereo mix on it. And here is the mono. Help in mono doesn't sound that great, but it does have some standouts like uh, yesterday in Ticket to Ride. They both sound pretty good. Here is Rubber Soul. And this is an early, a late 60s stereo copy. Here is another Rubber Soul. This is the Japanese one. Yeah. Japanese ones all have this EAS thing on the top. Here is another Rubber Soul. And I'm not sure what this is. I think this is another... This is probably, a, I think this is a blue box rubber sole because it does have the Garrett and Loft House, but it's not a flip back. Um, this is a an 80s pressing of rubber sole. I still have the limited edition sticker there. So this is essentially the 87 CD pressed on vinyl. And here's the, the record if you want to see that. So that's what it looks like. So it's on capital, but this does have the, um, the original English track listing. So it starts with like drive my car and everything. Um, this is the 2012 stereo. And here is the best way for now to listen to Rubber Soul. And this is the 2014 mono. Uh, to me, Rubber Soul is the only Beatles record that every song is better in mono than in stereo. Okay, and here is an American Rubber Soul, which a lot of people think is better than the English one. I think those people are nuts. Okay, let me adjust myself here. Here is a late 60s revolver. It does not have any kind of mono or stereo indicator on the corner here. Um, but this does sound pretty good. This is a Japanese revolver. And I don't know if the camera... Um, can pick this up, but the art on here is a lot darker than any other revolver I have. This here is another um, 87 CD pressed on vinyl. Uh, this does sound pretty good though, as you can see on Parlophone this time around, but it does have a barcode there on the top. Um, this is a bootleg mono pressing. This is um, a facsimile of, a, I think, a Brazilian pressing, and it's on orange vinyl. This is the 2012 stereo. Here is a 2014 mono. I have two of these. This one does not have the shrink wrap, but the next one does. Uh, shrink wrap with the hype sticker, which is cool. I got this for a really good price, so I picked it up. And this is the remix from 2021, or 22, I think. Here's the sticker. This is the one that came with the bag. Okay, next up is a collection of Beatles oldies. Only copy I have, this is on the silver and black parlor phone label so this is a later pressing let me go to my sergeant peppers this here is a mono ink american excuse me pressing and this is the very first um vinyl record i ever bought and i got it for less than a dollar uh, back in like i think 2000 2001 from a record store in new hope new jersey or new hope pennsylvania depending who you ask um, here is a stereo American pressing, original copy. This is also an American stereo, but this is on the Apple label. Here is the Japanese pressing. Well, I shouldn't say the Japanese pressing, but a Japanese pressing. Um, this I bought on my birthday. I always get myself uh, a birthday gift. This here is a um, Harry T. Moss pressing of Sgt. Pepper. And this sounds really good. And it does have the upside down. I don't know if I can make this focus. But it does have the upside down spine. 
of earlier English Sgt. Peppers. Okay, put that back. Here is a Direct Metal Master of Sgt. Pepper. This also sounds pretty good. Um, an interesting thing about this pressing is that it has a, a top spine. It's not gonna focus, but it does say uh, Sgt. Pepper right up here, which is interesting and I don't know, really all that useful. Um, what is this? This is the 2012. So 2012 stereo. Um, 2014 mono. And this here is the remix. Now I didn't stick these back on. I just put, and you'll see this on other ones. I, I just put the, um, the label on in front of the record and the bag, you know, the record sleeve holds it in place. So I think that's a cool way to kind of show off the hype sticker without actually having to stick it onto anything. Okay, we're gonna see the bottom shelf next. All right, we're gonna keep going. Here is a Japanese magical mystery tour. Now I prefer, and this is not a really popular opinion, but I actually prefer the EP to the um, American album. Here is the 2012 stereo. And the reason I prefer is that I don't think the, especially Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane, I don't think those songs really fit well with um, Magical Mystery Tour, but like I said, I'm the minority in that. Here is the mono Magical Mystery Tour. These are really expensive now. These are hard to find for less than like 250. All right, we're gonna go to my white album collection. I have a lot of those. Here is a German white album, which sounds pretty good. Sorry, there's a, a fire truck or something close to my house. Here is a French pressing, and this is a white vinyl, which is really cool. Here is a Japanese pressing. Here is an American pressing, but this is on capital. And the neat thing about this one um, is that the the four individual um, photographs of the Beatles is a poster. So they just connect them and made it a poster instead of having been, it be like its own individual things. This here is another Direct Metal Master. Uh, it's based on the CDs. As you can see, it does have a barcode here on the back. And uh, an interesting thing about this pressing, I don't know if it, you can see it because of the bag and the camera, but the Beatles, where it says the Beatles, it's a lot lower than it is on any other white album that I have. So it looks different. Here is, this is a bootleg of a direct metal master and this is on white vinyl and it has the silver and um silver and black parlophone labels which looks cool here is the 2012 stereo and a 2014 mono now i got this right before they started to get really rare i found this at a at a barnes and nobles for like 45 bucks, so I got lucky with this one. And here is the sole copy of, oops, there we go. The sole copy of Yellow Submarine that I own. This is a German pressing. And I think one copy is enough for Yellow Submarine. Okay, here is Abbey Road. And this is another um, Harry T. Moss pressing, and this sounds really good. Here is a Japanese pressing. One thing I, I, I said this with Revolver because it's the, the easiest to notice, but a lot of these, I don't know if it's this EAS line, but um, all the album covers are darker, like noticeably darker on these Japanese pressings. So I think that's somewhat interesting. Here is another, um, I guess early 90s, I think it's from 1995, but this is essentially the um, the 87 CD pressed on vinyl. 
and there's the barcode. And the weird thing about this, I don't know if it's weird. Um, this has the Apple logo on the on the record, but instead of having it like a like a black background, it's like a cream background. So it looks kind of interesting. Uh, this here is the 2012 stereo. And then the next one is the remix. You know, I remember someone saying that they probably should have changed um, a lot of these these remixes because without having the hype sticker on here and like looking at the uh, the label and the trademarks and all that, there's no real way to really know what pressing it is. And um, I think they should have made this like a gatefold, like the CD, which you'll see in a little while, just to kind of make it look a little different. Okay, um, here is Let It Be. This is an American pressing with the red apple. Here is a Japanese Let It Be with John and Ringo's face all covered up. Here is another American Let It Be with most of the shrink, shrink wrap still on it. And the cool thing about this one is that um, the sleeve, the record sleeve, is the original American Gatefold. And that the it also comes with a poster of this. So imagine this four times as big. Um, it has a poster of the album cover. <clears throat> Here is the 2012 stereo. And then we got the recent 2021 remix. And there's the label again. Okay, keep going. I'm sitting on the floor, so it's a little uncomfortable. Um, this is the Red Album, and this is on red vinyl. And I think this is the, yeah, this is a capital. So it has the capital labels on the records. And this is uh, red vinyl UK pressing. And this has the, the Apple label on the records. Here is, what is this? Oh, this is another, um, color vinyl, red vinyl. I have a lot of these, um, color vinyl, excuse me, got a little gas here. Uh, color vinyl, um, red and blue albums. And, uh, this is from, I think, 1994. So this is a digital pressing, which I think still sounds pretty good. And this here is the 2014 analog pressing, um, which I still think is essential for everyone together because these sound fantastic. And this here is the 1994 pressing of the Blue album on Blue Vinyl. Here is a 2014 steel, still sealed. I got this for like 20 bucks, uh, but I didn't open it. And, but I do have one that's open and here it is. So another 2014 blue album, sounds fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. We got Rock and Roll Volume One and Oh, excuse me, Rock and Roll Music Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, these have a different stereo mix, though. I think it's just the stereo images flipped. But these were, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong, but these were mastered by George Martin. Here is, these are the, this is the Hamburg tapes. So, um, doesn't have the cool cover, but it's the whole thing, so pretty cool. Um, I'm hoping, and I heard this is kind of a legit rumor that Peter Jackson's working on cleaning these up. The performances on this are actually really good. Here is uh, Beatles Love Songs. Uh, the reason why it's so knackered is that when I, when I was a teenager in my bedroom, I used to have this hanging on my wall with tape on these corners here, which is why I... They're all messed up, but I still have it. <clears throat> Here is Live at the Hollywood Bowl. I don't have the newer one, but I think this is still sufficient. Now this here is the Beatles 20 Greatest Hits, but I don't have 
the record sleeve, obviously. I just put it in this plain white um, sleeve. And then I stuck these pictures of them on the front and the back. So I think this kind of worked out pretty well. Here is Past Masters. I do want to get uh, an 80s copy of this. I heard they sound pretty good. Now here is Anthology 1. Back in there, no pun intended. Anthology 2. And Anthology 3, I do want to get a new copy. This one's a little knackered. And here is another mono record that I happen to buy before they got really expensive. The Mono Masters. I paid like 60 bucks for this, but now they go for like a couple hundred bucks. Oh, this doesn't go here. This goes here. Here is Beatles 1. This is the remix version from 2015. Everything's falling. Not very graceful right now. I made a whole video about this, but this is the remix of the Get Back performance, which is pretty cool. And last but not least, we have Now and Then. The 12 inch, obviously, that's why it's so big. And that's it for my non-box set Beatles records. Okay, so I'm not gonna pull these off the shelf because I have whole videos on most of these. Um, but we got the 2022 Revolver box set. Here's the 2017 CD box set for Sgt. Pepper. I'll pull this one out. This is the Magical Mystery Tour Blu-ray box set, which includes a reproduction of the uh, two L, not LP, excuse me, EP set. Here is um, the White Album with the Easter demos on vinyl. And this is the CD box set right now. And then we got the Abbey Road CD box set. The Let It Be remix box set from 2021. The Red and Blue album. And this is the uh, the color vinyl, which is cool. We have the 2014 um, All Things Must Pass by George Harrison. This is going into my solo stuff. And here is the remix. And this is on the Splatter Green vinyl. Now, we're going to move over just a little bit here, and we're going to see some of my solo stuff here. I don't have as much solo stuff as I would like, but um, get, get out. it's tight in here. Here is um, Living in the Material World. Extra Texture. I do need to get Dark Horse, which is an underrated album. A lot of George's solo stuff is underrated. Here is 33 and a third. Uh, Self-titled, George Harrison. I do have another copy. This is a better condition and sounding copy too. Okay, here is Somewhere in England. That cool picture there. Cloud Nine, which is a fantastic record. You know, I heard someone complaining about, I think on Reddit, complaining about this album cover. I think it's really cool. So that person needs to check themselves. And here is Brainwashed. And what's next? Let's see. Oh, John Stuff. Okay. So Plastic Ono Band. This is a 70s copy. And here is the recent remix. This is the double LP edition and it weighs a ton. It has posters and stickers and stuff like that, I think, in there. Um, here is Imagine, early copy. And then we got another Imagine. And here is Sometime in New York. Now, I do have this question. I shouldn't say questionable, but it was a questionable decision for John to do this. Um, I do have this covered up because I don't like that word and no one should. And I think, I understand what John was trying to say with that song. 
but I think him using that word kind of um, overtakes what he was trying to say with that song. Like, now, whenever someone talks about that song, that's all they talk about, and not what he was trying to say. Here's Mind Games, and I am excited for the new box set. Here is Walls and Bridges. There we go. Okay. Rock and roll. Double fantasy. Milk and honey. And give me some truth, which is a uh, best of or greatest hits or Whatever you want to call those types of records. Okay, here we're going into Paul McCartney. Here is McCartney. This is an original American copy. And then this here is the red vinyl. I do want to get the Half Speed Master because I started collecting those, as you will see. Um, here's Ram. This is an American copy. I think it's an original. Here is the Half Speed Master for Ram. I need to keep this spine on here. Here is the Half Speed Master for Wild Life. This is a Wings album, but I put it with Paul, as I think most people do with their collections. Here is Red Rose Speedway with the Obi strip. And Band on the Run. I think I skipped one though, didn't I? I did, because I skipped my older copy of Band on the Run, which should have been before from the OB, the OB strip. Got to lean these a little so they don't keep falling. Here is Venus and Mars. Still has the hype sticker on it. Um, okay. Tug of War. So I am missing quite a bit for Paul. I will eventually get them all, though. But some of them are almost impossible to get for a good price. Here is that Russian album, which I don't know how I got this, but I have it. Flaming Pie. This is the double EP, excuse me, the double LP edition, which is the newer one. Um, one of his best, in my opinion, um, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. Here is a new which I got for like less than 10 bucks brand new. And McCart McCartney 3, which is a really good record. I didn't get one of those newer ones they did for the three year anniversary, which I don't know if three year anniversary was a thing, but I guess they did it because it's McCartney 3. I don't know. Um, here is Ringo, the only Ringo album I have on vinyl. Actually, I think it might be the only Ringo album I have. Okay. We're going to keep going. Okay, so what we have up here, this is the top of the bookshelf, is the 2019 Singles box set. And I did stick one of my copies of Now and Then. This is the black vinyl edition in here. Because it fits and it fits and it fits. So it's in there. And then down here, past all these books, is my collection of Beetle books. So... Here is Get Back, the classic Gunno band. I the Storm by Paul McCartney. <clears throat> I Me Mine, a lyrics book. I have a couple of these. This is um, Many Years From Now, the authorized biography. The lyric book, another lyric book. This is a Paul McCartney, the lyrics book, excuse me. And then this here is uh, an illustrated lyric book. John Remembers, now this is the um, infamous, I think, 1970 interview, Rolling Stone interview, where he's just mad the whole time. Um, this, this is just a book here of John Lennon quotes, the Ray Coleman biography, which is pretty good. And yeah, that's it. <clears throat> okay, right now I'm going to show you some of the EPs and 45s that I have, um, both Beatles and Solo. And here is Twist and Shout, EP. Uh, this is an original copy, and I got it for a good price. And then behind this, I have the 
2014 Mono Long Tall Sally. This was a record store day exclusive. Here is a Capitus, Capital Squirrel Ticket to Ride with Yes It Is. This is, these are both Help and I'm Down on Apple and that ugly orange Capital label from the 70s. Here is an original Nowhere Man What Goes On. Here is Strawberry Fields Forever. This is an original American copy. And then on the other side here, I have I Am The Walrus. This is the 2015 remix. Is it 2015? I think they, no. They released this for Record Store Day, I think after the Sgt. Pepper box set but it has the 2015 remix of Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane. So that's what this is. Here is the Magical Mystery Tour EP. I think this is an early 80s copy. I didn't really look into it. I'm, just, I'm really just guessing. I don't know where this is from. When this is from, excuse me. Here is the Ballad of John and Yoko with Old Brown Shoe. Very nice picture sleeve. This is an, an original copy that I looked into. Here is Let It Be with, um, oh yeah, you know my name, look at the number. Here is a picture disc of Love Me Do, backed with P.S. I Love You. This is the EP for Live at the BBC, Baby It's You. And on the other side here, I have Hey Jude with the cool Beatles on Apple sleeve. This here is the Marvel vinyl version of Now and Then and the clear one. So I have four copies of Now and Then on vinyl, if you're keeping count. Next up is a Japanese cold turkey with the cool x-ray of John Skull. At least I think it's John Skull. It might be both their skulls, but the skull has the glasses, which is pretty cool. Here is a Record Store Day Instant Karma. This is a remix. Um, this is My Sweet Lord, and this is like on a, a clear vinyl, but it almost looks like it's a glow-in-the-dark kind of color, if you know what I mean. Here is Instant Karma again. And on the other side is Happy Christmas. It's not the B side. Like I have two 45s in the same sleeve. <clears throat> this is Power to the People. Backed with Touch Me by Yoko. And Fuck a Pig, it's Paul coming up. This is a Japanese copy, which is cool because even the, I, I didn't talk about this when I showed my, my uh, full records, but the Japanese records all come with lyric sheets. And the cool thing about the Japanese 45 is that they also come with lyric she sheets. So both coming up here and say, say, say have lyric sheets. Here is just like starting over. Um, all those years ago, the picture sleeve, and then the picture sleeve for I Got My Mom Set On You, um, which is, from what my parents say, um, was my favorite song when I was, like, a toddler. So it's pretty cool to have that as a 45. Here is Rack My Brain. Oh, I do have another Ringo record. <laughs> uh, Rack My Brain, which is a song that George Harrison wrote for Ringo. And this is a great song, I really like it. And here is another copy of All Those Years Ago. Um, these are kind of Beatle adjacent. Um, here's Mary Hopkins, Those Were the Days. Um, Come and Get It by Badfinger. Baby Blue by Badfinger, which was used for the series finale of Breaking Bad. Um, no matter what by Badfinger, and probably the best song that uh, 
was written by the Beatles for another artist. It's for you. And this was done by Cella Black. Oh, I was showing you the wrong side. Here it is. It's for you. Um, there's a demo of Paul singing this song, but it's not the full song. I don't know if the full even exists, but I would love to hear it because it sounds fantastic. Okay, this is my CD collection. I'm not going to really pull most of them out, but if I have anything that's interesting, I will. Um, here are my individual 2009 remasters. This is a Japanese 2009 remaster of the White Album. And this is the 30th anniversary of the White Album. Um, right here, this is interesting, is Beatles 1, but it comes in one of these newer jewel cases, which is cool. Got a couple bootlegs here that I got 20 something years ago. Um, this here is actually a DVD of the Beatles' uh, first US visit, but it comes in a jewel case. It is official. Beatles Love. This is the 30th anniversary of All Things Us Past, which I got the day it came out, along with the 50th anniversary. This has the stickers. Here are the um, John Lennon albums from like the 2000s, all of them up to here. Here's Lennon Legend, which was kind of the default best of for a long time. Acoustic, Interview, what is this? Definitive Collection. John Lennon has a lot of best of. Here is Band on the Run, this is a 30th anniversary. And here is the new 50th anniversary with the underdog mixes. Here is Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. Memory Almost Full, which they do need to re-release. I'm surprised they haven't. This is Wingspan, which is a Beatles 1-esque compilation of Paul McCartney and Wings. And the Beatles in Mono box set. Um, over here, this is a Abbey Road puzzle that I have that I never put together because I don't like putting puzzles together, but it looks cool here. This here is the White Album on 8-track. And we got Revolver. This is the only American Revolver I have on cassette. The White Album on cassette. Lennon Anthology. So this is very, very similar to the Beatles Anthology, but like Lennon's solo stuff. And we got an itty bitty CD of She Loves You. And these here are the remix CDs of the remixes they did recently. I also have the CD for, oh, that's on it. The CD for Now and Then. And the CD box set for the new Red and Blue album. This here is the, 20, the 2009 stereo uh, remasters. Uh, the US albums, which I got recently for a really good price. It is an authentic copy. I only pay a hundred bucks brand new for this. So not bad. And here are the original 87 CDs. The 1993 Red and Blue albums. Past Masters 1 and 2, Live at the BBC, Real Love, and Free as a Bird, Beatles Anthology, Yellow Submarine Song Track, which are remixed, an original Beatles 1, and Let It Be Naked. And then down here, this is my exercise bike, <laughs> is my Blu-rays. So this is the 4K version of A Hard Day's Night. We got Help, Magical Mystery Tour, Yellow Submarine. I really hope they release all these in 4K. Beatles Anthology, which desperately needs some kind of re-release. Beatles 1 Plus, 8 Days a Week, Get Back, a Concert for George, and Living in the Material World, which is a documentary <clears throat> by Martin Scorsese. Then down here we have the Beatles Anthology book, which I got the day it came out. And these are two of the uh, empty boxes for the remixes that came with those um, burlap sacks. So, yeah. And that is everything. Thank you for watching this uh, really long video. And... Uh, Thanks for watching.